Hi, friends. Winter came gradually. I began to feel it when on the way to the store my hands became very cold. In general, I am a person who is always feeling cold, sometimes even in the summer. Naturally, people invented gloves a long time ago. But gloves don't produce warmth, but they only keep the heat of our hands. So I decided hastily assemble a mini heater especially for my dear hands. Such kind of heaters are also not new. There are plenty of them in the markets, but I wanted to do it myself. A long time ago I bought several power banks in the metal boxes. On the base of this box a mini heater was collected. Our heater will be electric. There are also heaters which worked with a combustible mixture inside. There are long time warming bottles working on the principle of catalytic combustion. Of course there are electric heaters with built-in battery and heating element. I bought a wire at AliExpress. Such a miracle. It's not an ordinary wire. It's an infrared heating element. It is used in particular as a heater for warm floor. Also, you could wrap water pipes so that the water doesn't freeze. In general, there are a lot of applications for such a heater. The heater consists of a fiber-resistive material that heats up, and on top is the heat-resistant flexible insulation. Such samples are powered from the mains. 10 meters of such a wire can take about 160 watts when powered by 220 volts. This material I decided to use in my heater. The optimum power of the heating element was selected experimentally. For this was used in a chrome heater. I wrapped the wire on the aluminum frame of the power bank and powered from 12 volts. Then I picked up the length so that the maximum 20 to 30 seconds the box heated to 50 degrees. Eventually I found that this requires a heater with a power of 6 watts. Knowing some initial data and Ohm's law, it's easy to calculate the desired length of the heater. But you need to take into account that with the temperature growth the resistance will increase too, so the power will decrease. The length and resistance of my item isn't so important because everyone will calculate the heater individually depending on the supply voltage and the length of the heater. The heater will be powered by one 18 650 standard lithium battery, not directly but through a step-up converter. To get the desired power from 3.7 volts without converter, you need to shorten the length of the wire and connect several in parallel. To avoid complexity, I decided to use the converter. In this case, the heater will be whole and will stretch along the entire frame, thereby ensuring uniform heating. By the way, about the battery. You need a protected battery, otherwise it can break out of the service for a deep discharge. Links to the necessary batteries can be found in the description. I kept a certain distance between the windings of the heater, forming something like the slots for my fingers so that the heater will lie perfectly in my hand. As for the boost converter, a cheap module MT3608 is suitable for these purposes. We applied 3.7 volts to the input of the board and set 12 volts at the module output by rotating the tuning resistor. My box unfortunately wasn't large enough and the converter board simply didn't fit on it. But I didn't want to change the case and eventually I decided to cut the converter's board. That's what I got. The sizes have decreased in two and a half times. Let's go further. It would be possible to create a separate printed circuit board for charger and converter circuit, but at home it is rather difficult to make boards for small components. For that purpose, we recommend to trust to GLCPCB factory. They are one of the leading manufacturers of printed circuit boards. At the first order, free shipping is available, and the price of the board starts from $2 for 10 pieces. This is much cheaper than making PCB at home, and factory quality is always pleasant to the eyes. You just need to download your Gerber file, pay for the order, and that's all. A link to GLC PCB can be found in the description. Now let's make measurements of power and operating time. I apply 3.7 volts to the converter input, simulating the battery, and to the output connect the heater and wattmeter. The consumption is slightly less than 2 amperes, of which about 100 milliamperes is consumed by the wattmeter itself. So at the input we had slightly more than 7 watts, and at the output we have about 5 watts, so the efficiency is about 70%. Naturally, without a converter there would be less loss, but even with all this in mind, the 2200 milliamperes hour battery will be enough for over an hour of continuous heating. And if that's not enough, you can take a 3400 milliamperes hour battery. 
By the way, the heat-resistant adhesive tape is wrapped around the aluminum box. It was originally used for the thermal insulation of the housing. This is necessary so that the battery doesn't overheat. But later tests showed that most of the heat will be directly transferred to the hand, and inside temperature is not critical, so adhesive tape is basically not needed. Despite the cut-down converter board, I had to extend the case, since I forgot about the fact that I planned to put the USB charging here. The heater is turned on with the button without fixation, which is directly under the thumb. It's convenient, no matter in left hand or right hand you will hold the heater. Why the unfixed button is used? Since the heater will be basically in the pocket, there is no guarantee that it will not be left turned on. With the unfixed button there will be no such problems, release and everything turned off. The charging circuit is built on TP4056, nothing new. This board also has been reduced. Now let's turn to the heater and test it with the thermal sensor. I think the result is excellent. If you keep a heater in your hand and it's too hot, the temperature can be reduced by reducing the output voltage of the converter. So I made a hole for adjustment. The turns of the heater wire can be glued with a super glue or epoxy, or wrap all with a thermo tape. Of course, you can use other boxes. For this purpose, perfectly suits the aluminum box from some old capacitors. By the way, it was possible not to remove the board of the power bank and, if necessary, to recharge the phone, but I don't need that. Eventually, I wrap the heater with an aluminum self-adhesive film. Now the heat is transferred more evenly. Well, the heater has been tested many times and goes well with its tasks, and soon I intend to do another one for the second hand. Links to all components for the assembly of such a heater, as well as links to factory heaters, will be in the description. Don't forget to evaluate the video if the information was useful and to subscribe to our group on Facebook. The link is also in the description. Goodbye until new meetings with you was Kaysian TV.